Welcome to our Freezer Meals 101 Appetizer Marathon. You are going to love what we have for you and it is going to be so great to have your freezer full of appetizers this holiday season. It's so nice to have them when you either host or when you even go to someone else's house. Oh yes, like I'm not hosting anything this year, but we have like three different places to go. I'm gonna be so glad to have these in my freezer. Absolutely, you're always the favorite guest when you bring a really good appetite. Especially if it's wrapped in bacon. <laughs> And we'll be getting to some of those today too. We actually have three different events that are gonna be here that are all appetizers. So we're doing Christmas Eve of just appetizers, New Year's Eve, of course, because New Year's Eve is kind of the quintessential appetizer night. And then we're gonna do a get together between Christmas and New Year's, which we used to do all the time and haven't for years. I'm really looking forward to that one because sometimes I come to the New Year's one. I think my husband is coming to your Christmas Eve one this year, maybe. We are going away and he's working and we had to decide, like, do we stay here with him or do we go? And he's like, I'm working anyway. Just go, it'll be fine. I've invited him over <laughs> to Charlotte's house for appetizers on Christmas Eve. But the holiday party, like you're in between yeah. Christmas and New Year's, I am so excited about that party because, not that it's a rager, but it is lovely. It is so full of people that we haven't seen for so long. It's really, really great. I'm excited that you're doing it. It has really good food. <laughs> And it has really good food. Something that's going to make it easier to pull off, and one of the reasons I actually am willing to do it again this year is because I'm making the things now before the rush of the holidays. I can just pull them out, and some of them need to go in the oven, and some of them can just be served right away. We're, like, we're all familiar with doing baking that way. Lots of people start their baking in November to get it ready for Christmas. You can do it with appetizers too. Not every appetizer, but many appetizers, and we're gonna show you how. So we're gonna jump into the first recipe here, but throughout this video, we're gonna give you tips on how to make this faster for yourself because we want you to experience some stress-free holiday fun mm -hmm. this year too. The first recipe we're making are Christmas pinwheels. They are super simple, hardly any ingredients needed, but they're festive because they're red and green. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so for these, you're going to need some spinach or pesto flour tortillas so that you get that pop of green. All you're gonna do is you're gonna mix together some cream cheese. You can use regular cream cheese at room temperature or you can use the whipped kind to make it easier to stir. Some ranch seasoning, some dry ranch, chives and some diced red pepper. You wanna dice it a little bit smaller than what you might usually dice your red pepper at just to make it easier for rolling. Once you've got that mixed together, you're gonna spread that out on your flour tortillas, the green ones, roll them as tightly as you can, and then you're actually gonna roll these in plastic wrap individually, put them into a large resealable freezer bag and get them into your freezer. The reason you want to roll them individually is so that they don't stick to each other in the bag and also because that way you can take out one at a time and if you're just having it as a little side with a whole bunch of appetizers, you can just pull out one. Or if you're feeding a crowd, you can pull out all four, slice them up and serve them. Yep, yeah, that's really awesome. This next recipe is mini cheese balls and these are so stinking cute. Yes. Now, and they really, really are. And what's so nice is then when you take one, you could like have your little knife and you can just spread it on your cracker or two or three crackers or whatever you want. Or you could just pop it right into your mouth and have a lot of cheese at once. And that's really okay too, because you can measure cheese with your heart. Yes, you can. Yes, you I, can. When you said that, that gave me such a visual of like someone popping one in and then... And yeah, then being like, that, mm, that's yeah. a lot of cheese. And people coming up to them to talk and they can't talk because their mouth is like full of cheese. <laughs> so you can do this. We aren't necessarily recommending this. How about that? Because it... They're little and they're mini and they're cute, but really I think it's intended to be spread over a couple of crackers. So yes. take your time with the cheese ball. 
um, but it is really cute. We're going to start out in our bowl some softened cream cheese and then we are going to add in some shredded cheddar. Now it can be quarter cup, half cup. Again, you can measure this with your heart to some degree. We're going to add in a tablespoon of dried onion. Now what we have here is Epicure's dried onion mix. It's what's it called? Three, Three onion. onion that Charlotte really likes and so we add that in which is very, very nice. We add a dash of pepper, a little bit of hot sauce, a little bit of Worcestershire and some lemon juice. We're going to mix that all together. Now, you can do this with a fork, you can do this with a handheld mixer, you could use a stand mixer if you felt that you needed to, but get it really nice and mixed. And then we can take a small scoop and just scoop each one onto some parchment paper and then you wanna let it chill. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now because we have made these and chilled them and now they are ready to be rolled. Now that they're nice and chilled, we are going to take them and just give them a little bit more of a re-roll so that they are a little bit more ball shaped instead of having that flat bottom. And then we can roll them in either parsley that's been finely chopped. You can do dried parsley if you want, but we have fr fresh parsley today and cranberries. So again, we're with our red and green theme, they're gonna be lovely. They're gonna be so festive. So festive. And then, you know what? You can just put them right back on your parchment paper because what are we going to do? We are going to pop these back in the freezer and let them freeze solid so that when then we can put them into a bag and they won't... Uh, I find you have to press the cranberries in, in into it. Um, the cranberries are a little bit more finicky. I would chop the, the cranberries personally. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm full of them. Next year. <laughs> We are going to chop our cranberries yeah. before we roll our mini cheese balls. I think they would stick better. But super cute, right? Super cute. So we just give them a little roll. Now, if you don't have a small cookie scoop, um, don't despair. You probably have some other small container like a quarter cup measuring cup. And if you scoop that and then divide it in two, that will actually be two tablespoons. You could divide those again and make four, and they would mm -hmm. be perfect one tablespoon, and then they'd be a little more even, if that matters to you. If you feel like your cheese balls should be bigger or smaller, you can go right ahead and make them. Definitely, we're cutting these next year. <laughs> and if you wanna have it so that you've got like mama bear um, oh, cheese a little balls. snowman. And little tiny little yeah, cheese could. balls. <laughs> you just go right ahead. Because ideally, you're gonna have your kids helping you with this. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have some Christmas music going with some eggnog or maybe a little wine. And you know, sometimes they might not end up the same size and that's okay. Because at the end of the day, you're just scraping them on to a cracker, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great idea because just like we're doing today with mm -hmm. doing this marathon of appetizers. I know a lot of you do Christmas baking and you involve the whole family and, or even you've got friends that come over or your mom, your sister, whatever. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you can do this the same way. Make it all festive, make your home all full of music. We've got the Christmas music playing. I know you can't hear it in this video. When we did the initial roll or the initial mix of this, we had some really good Christmas Mariah Carey cheese. was in our kitchen. <laughs> and so was Kelly Clarkson. Um, something else you might consider, I know people are, do this often with the uh, cookies. You can do a cookie exchange, a baking exchange. You could do an appetizer exchange. That but is a fantastic idea. It's a fantastic idea. idea. I told you, I am full of them. <laughs> All right, this is gonna be my last one I'm gonna do on camera, and then we're gonna move on to the next recipe. But I hope you like them. They are really tasty, and they're just so darn cute. And they look little Rudolph's nose. <laughs> As you can see, we have gotten a little more Christmassy around here with our backdrop. And your Christmas apron. And your plaid. And our Starbies. I have a teenage daughter, so now we call it Starbies instead of Starbucks. But that's what we have this morning. And usually we do second cup because it's Canadian. But you know, this was closer to the grocery store and there may or may not have been a run for sour cream this morning. Yeah. Well, it was a bigger story than that. It finally snowed, snowed, snowed. And so um, my da her daughter often drives my daughter to school. And my daughter, for those of you who don't know, we're neighbors. <laughs> we're neighbors. And so, yes, that's why 
my daughter sometimes drives your daughter to school and and her daughter has a vehicle my daughter still does not so she drives and this morning my daughter comes and she's like she's not gonna drive she said it was too slippery she went through a stop sign or she was going to so I need a ride to school I'm like okay we'll call her back and text her who am I kidding <laughs> text her back and I'll drive and we'll take you both I'll take you both to school so I'm doing that and Charla said can you pick up the sour cream <laughs> So yes, of course, I'm going to pick up the sour cream. We totally ran out during part of our session, so we have to finish something else later because there was no sour cream. And I also picked up some lemon juice because I noticed that that was missing and we hit the end of that one. Thank so you. You are welcome. See, we're a team effort here. Back to the backsplash. Two brains are better than one. <laughs> Two brains are better than one. But okay. we're going to show you the backsplash. Ta-da! So give us a tour, Charla. Well, my herb garden kind of fits in because it's green. <laughs> and some of the lights on it are red. Anyway, the grow lights. Um, garland. Because, Very Christmas. You know, Christmas. But this is really what I wanted to showcase. And this was made by my son's wife before she was his wife, last year when she was his fiance. And she sent it to us for Christmas and I just love homemade things and things that have thought put into them. And so this is special for me. And then we move on to one of my, oh! <laughs> so this is supposed to say, oh holy night. And we were in a real hurry this morning. <laughs> and it says night, oh holy. Um, let's swap it around. <laughs> that is very funny. Oops. Good, good. It's lovely. <laughs> oh, night holy. Oh, holy oh. night. <laughs> Shoot. We need more, more caffeine. All right. Decorating yeah. 101 with Christy and Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to the freezer meals. That's what we're real experts at. <laughs> appetizers are my absolute favorite thing. I would rather have appetizers than my main course. I'd rather have appetizers than dessert. I think it's pretty well established if you've watched our videos before that appetizers are really my jam. <laughs> they really are your jam and I'm glad that they're your jam because, because then they like secondhand get to be my jam. It is really, there are a lot of benefits to being Charlotte's friend and food is one of them. And I love inventing appetizers and Christy and her husband are often my guinea pigs. Like they have been for years, years and years. Years, years. I'm like, come over for a games night so you can try some new things I invented. She lures us in with the games, but we stay for the food. <laughs> <laughs> and the good company, right? Of course. Oh, yes, in the good company. <laughs> so when you're making a ton of appetizers at one time, like we are today, one of the things that makes it go faster and that saves you money is if you choose things that have like ingredients. So as an example, goat cheese was on sale at Costco and it came in a two pack. So I was trying to invent many things with goat cheese. I only invented a few, but you know, and if you double or triple each of them, you end up using all your goat cheese. Same with, you know, we're gonna do some bacon wrap things next. You wanna do those at the same time because you've got your bacon out anyway, your hands are getting slimy anyway, you might as well just do it all. And you're gonna save time that way and not cross contaminate because you can wipe everything down after. I did end up buying a lot of these groceries at Costco and I'm not much of a Costco shopper, but for these it was like, if I got a rotisserie chicken, which is pretty inexpensive there, then we could do two dips with that. If I got the crab there, it was like almost $2 a can less expensive mm -hmm. than at the grocery store. So, you know, we're gonna make multiple things with crab. So just when you're planning, if you plan things that overlap in ingredients, it's gonna save you money, it's gonna save you time. And it's, people aren't going to say like, oh, there's too much bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody ever says that. And here's the other nice thing, because it's something like crab, if you find a good sale on it, say in September, buy it then, and then you don't have to spend that, like it can sit on your shelf for a couple of months until you go to use it. Same with the bacon. I don't know about you, but when I go to Costco, I buy the 
big packs of the four packs of bacon and throw it in my freezer. If you're going to cook the bacon, you can go ahead and cook it and crumble it and put it in all of your dips and you saved all that money way back then. Now, if you're going to wrap things in bacon, you should buy fresh bacon and do it then. So, but then you you know, saved in some places, you can sometimes take the hit in others if you have to. And it really, really makes it cheaper in the long run. So now that we've got you thinking and dreaming about bacon, we're gonna get to our bacon wrapped things. One of my daughters specifically requested these bacon wrapped water chestnuts when I was saying that we were gonna be doing appetizers for Christmas Eve. They are so, so simple to make. They're three ingredients. And a couple of our other recipes today are three ingredients. They are. So we're making it as easy as possible for you. All you're gonna do is take some whole water chestnuts Open your can, drain it, and then right into the can, you're going to put some soy sauce. You're gonna set that aside, and while you're making some of your other appetizers, those water chestnuts can marinate in that soy sauce. Then you're going to take your bacon and some kitchen scissors. You're gonna slice your bacon in thirds, and you're just going to roll each water chestnut in a third of a piece of bacon. What you wanna do with these is you're going to want to freeze them before you refreeze them. Lay them out individually on a parchment paper lined tray. In this case, we did them on a plate because we were running out of trays because that's how many appetizers we've got going on here. Uh, but once you get those frozen so that they don't stick together, you can transfer them into a freezer bag and get all the air that you can out of your freezer bag because when you are doing anything in the freezer, air is your enemy. So you wanna just remove the air so that you don't end up with freezer burn. Then get these in your freezer. On the day you go to cook these, you just pop them onto your cookie sheet and get them in the oven. If you have multiple bacon wrapped things, they can usually share the same cookie sheet, which is extra nice too. We are going to put a video right up there to last year's holiday appetizer video. There are more bacon wrap things in there. We have some really, really good jalapeno poppers that are bacon wrapped. They are so delicious and they're kind of a staple around here, especially for the holidays. But we didn't make them this year because we couldn't find good enough jalapenos or enough good jalapenos to make them. So. Sometimes you gotta work with what you got. But we made other bacon wrapped things. Necessity is the mother of invention. That is true. That is true, even when it comes to baking. The next one is bacon wrapped dates stuffed with blue cheese. Now, this is so good because they're just itty bitty, teeny tiny ones. So it seems like a lot of work, but you're doing the work now. So Christmas you is going to love that you did this work, but they are so simple because it's just the three ingredients. Literally, you cut the date, now listen, most dates are pitted when you buy them. If you buy pitted dates, they have a slit already, so you can just open them up. So spend a bit of time, open them up carefully because you can split them right in half if you're not careful. But then you fill it with your blue cheese, just a little slice, roll it up in your bacon, and we're gonna do the same thing. Put it on some parchment paper, let, let the seam side down, right, of the bacon. We're gonna throw it in the freezer, let it get frozen, then back into a freezer bag and remove that excess air. It couldn't be simpler. And because it's wrapped, if they fell apart and were in halves, they just stayed together because the bacon really holds you together. And for such a simple thing. Oh, they're, they're just so really darn good. good. I think these are called Devils on Horseback in the UK. Oh, UK people, tell us, tell us. We want to know, I love, I love finding out stuff like that. I know, it's yeah. been so fun. That's been one of the most interesting things about our YouTube channel is having people from all around the world watching and letting us know like all the different foods, customs, things from their area. I have super loved I that. have really loved that. And if you didn't know, we're Canadian, so we're like, a lot of things about us are very American, but also very English because that's, you know, where a lot of our history comes from. And so we have things like, some overlap. There is some overlap. That's all, that, that's all we're saying. But I have not had devils on horseback at a Christmas party yet, so this year we will. Now, as Charlotte mentioned before, 
if you're going to make one thing and you have to buy the thing anyway, you might as well make more. So we have these dates, right? So we're gonna make more dates. This one, again, three ingredients, super simple, very, very good. We start out with our date that we've gently, gently cut in half or, or opened up a little bit. We're gonna stick some goat cheese in there because remember she bought the goat cheese at Costco and we have a lot of goat cheese. And then I'm gonna roll them in crushed up pistachios. Now I have a nut cruncher, like I have a nut grinder that my mom had one like in the 60s. And so when I had my own household, I felt like I needed this nut grinder and so we, I brought it and so we've borrowed it for this. And then I just roll it around in those nuts. Now dates are kind of sticky, plus the goat cheese is sticky and you can kind of press it in there, lay them on your parchment paper, get them into your freezer. And these are just, again, wonderful little delights. These might be angels on horseback. <laughs> we, can, we could call we them, that. them that. Maybe there's a real name for them, I don't know. I think it came out of Charlotte's head. But they're really, really good and again, just that little taste of something sweet and the goat cheese is tangy and the nuts are wholesome. Oh, they're just good. It's simple, but it's also festive because the pistachios have that pop of green and... Dates are a little brownie red. That's, yes. That's a push, but... <laughs> it's just, and it's really, it stands out and looks really nice mm -hmm. on a tray. So again, if you have to bring something to someone's house, <laughs> This took you like five minutes to make. Wouldn't this be a nice one to like sprinkle over a charcuterie board? Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. You know how fancy charcuterie boards have been getting lately? That is one of the things I am making this year to go to my sister-in-law's. And I just had that bright idea that I am going to use some of these to like kind of fill gaps on my charcuterie, charcuterie board. I think that's quite brilliant. It is. It is. Look at us coming up with ideas. Oh, we are just on fire today. Since this is a Christmas video, we have something that we just have been dying to talk to you about because it's so Christmassy. It is so Christmassy. It's not freezer mealy or appetizery, but it's so Christmassy. And it's very Charlotte and Christy. <laughs> yes, it is. So a few weeks ago, we went to Invermere, which is in the mountains in British Columbia, Canada. So that is not where we live, but we drove there on a like, planning trip for next year for Freezer Meals 101, for our Freezer Meals 101 club, for the YouTube channel, for the website, for all the things that we've got planned for you. We needed to get away, get away from all the distractions that we both have at home and away from the computer work and the work work and just kind of be creative and let our brains think of all the things. That's right. But we also wanted to do, because we did the trip last year, but we didn't do any relaxing. So this year we also wanted to do some relaxing. And so we actually scheduled in. <laughs> we scheduled. We scheduled in relaxing things. Um, we had pedicures and I would like to show you my feet, but I'm not going to. It's not that kind of channel, but they're very cute. We had, yeah, we did all the things. We watched Christmas movies And we walked every night. up and down this beautiful, Boulevard, like they're kind of their main street in Invermere, and we were there for their tree, tree lighting, lighting festival. <gasps> and so we felt like we were in a Hallmark Christmas movie. Like we were just waiting for like the cab driver to bump into us and like and happened to have gone to high school with us or something. Yeah, yeah. like, I'm like it, oh, we haven't seen you for years. It was like the most Christmassy <laughs> thing I have ever experienced in my life. This downtown, downtown, it's one street, and it's, it's little and cute and everything you imagine a small town to be, except with a mountain backdrop, so right. better. They, in their Christmas tree lighting festival, they had on every corner, they had an open fire with hay bales, with flannel blankets over the hay bales for you to sit on at the fire. No kidding. They had free popcorn but and hot chocolate. They had the horses. Yes, they had a wagon ride with the Clydesdale, with Clydesdale horses <laughs> and the clip clopping like and it was children everything. and they had at the at the local bookstore, which is my favorite bookstore in the world, just as an aside, they had where they were reading a Christmas story to the kids and like everything about this was just perfect. It, it was, was perfect. It was perfection. And then it got we, better. <laughs> yes. We walked into this store. 
It's called Art on Ninth. And the lady there was friendly and warm. The whole town was friendly and warm, seriously. She invited us to participate in her interactive art exhibit. Yes, she did. Um, this beautiful gallery, and she had, she had these trees set up in the front and out on an island, not unlike this, in the middle of the gallery, she had these beautiful little glass ornaments and paper. And she said, I want you to write your joy down on this paper and then roll it up and put it inside this ornament. So we did. The next part was we had to go then to the tree, hang ours on the tree, and then take somebody else's that they had written their joy in so we could take it home and put it on our tree. We got to take someone else's joy home with us and, and somebody leave took our joy yes. for someone else. It was just like the most wholesome, perfect thing ever. And she had just very simply, like this is something that you could do at your holiday gathering, at anything, you could do it with your kids. It's so, like it's such a great idea. She had just taken one of those gold Sharpies mm -hmm. and written joy on each of those clear ornaments that you can buy. And so I brought mine. You have to show yours. Yeah. Hers is here, because she lives here. I did not bring mine, because I was taking children to school and expected them. <laughs> So I brought mine so that I can show you, and I have not opened it yet. So I'm going to open it. Are you going to read it today? I am. I haven't read mine. I was saving mine for Christmas. Okay. So this is someone else's joy that I now have, and I'm going to open it, and we'll see what it says. It's kind of like... Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> on Sundays with my friends and partner. Isn't that sweet? That is very sweet. Honestly, that is very, very sweet. This is so sweet. So that was the first time this year that I really felt like I got into the holiday spirit was when we were at the Christmas lighting festival mm -hmm. and in this town where everyone is warm and friendly. We definitely have to go back next year to do our annual planning. I think that we definitely do. We'll throw a link down below for Art on Ninth because you should check them out. They had some really beautiful stuff in there and a lot of local stuff and it was just really great. Plus, obviously, she is a lovely lady. So we still have the goat cheese and I also had this giant jar of artichokes in my pantry and I decided that that would probably be able to make at least two appetizers. So this is going to be one of them. So we're making a goat cheese crab and artichoke dip. I think it's going to be really good, but I'm just kind of inventing it, so no promises. <laughs> It'll be good. Charlotte has one of those palettes that allow people to become great chefs and stuff because she could do flavor profiling and you could do the blind taste test with her and she would know what it was and pick up the spices and, and describe it. So you can trust her. And if you are in our Freezer Meals 101 Club or if you are experienced with our recipes, throw them down below there how much you love them because we hear all the time, like these taste good, these taste good, these taste good. I'm in other clubs and they don't always taste good. These ones taste the best, and they really, really do, because we have her. That's all. That's Carry what on. I do. <laughs> These are gonna taste fantastic. <laughs> I might not know how to cook, but I know what tastes good. So, Christy helps me with how to actually Execute. Cook. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're a good team. Okay, so for your goat cheese, crab, and artichoke dip. In a bowl, you're going to add your artichokes that are chopped and drained some goat cheese, sharp white cheddar that's shredded, some canned crab, a bit of mayo, just one or two tablespoons. We have found mayo doesn't freeze very well, but in the past we've discovered that as long as it's in a dip like this and there's a lot of other ingredients and it's just a small amount, it does really well. So we're taking an educated guess here that this will work. A bit of lemon juice, a splash of hot sauce, some salt, pepper, and fresh parsley. Once you have that all mixed together, 
You're going to add it into your containers. We're just putting them straight into some small foil containers. That way these can go right into the oven. You could put them into freezer bags if you wanted to save space and then you would transfer them into a container on the day that you go to bake them. But we're just wanting to make things as easy as possible. So for this time, we're using foil containers for anything like this that needs to go in the oven. That's so smart. And then also, when you go to take it someplace, you can thaw it before you ever leave. And then you just walk in and you're like, here, do you have room in your oven? And it's just little, right? Like you're going to a party that has 30 people. You don't need something giant. Everybody's bringing something. You know what I mean? Now, while we are working with our crab, we are going to make a hot corn and crab dip because we have the crab. Again, corn is something that you can use canned corn. You could use frozen corn for this and buy it, you know, a month or two in advance when corn is on sale or you hit that case lot sale. That's our favorite thing to do. And that's how we got this corn. That's how we got this corn. And it's just a way to just make it cheaper for later so that you can just do that much extra if you are the extra type person. In a medium bowl, we're going to stir together some corn that has been drained, crab meat, some green chilies, cream cheese, red pepper, purple onion, minced garlic, some grated cheese, again with a little bit of mayo and some salt. We're gonna just divide these into those little tin foil trays, put a label on them, and these ones you might wanna write down on there that you wanna bake them at 350 for 20 minutes or so um, with the lid off. You just eat them with some crackers or tortilla chips. You wanna serve it warm. Mm -hmm. So good. So good. Nice and warm and bubbling and yummy, yummy. Mm -hmm. Now we do have some fantastic dips and there's more coming your way. Yes, we do. And actually this recipe is available in our Freezer Meals 101 Club. The link for that is gonna be down below. And you'll find a lot of the recipe links in the description below. So if you're wanting to make these yourself, you wanna check that out. This next recipe is a little bit more complicated, but I promise the extra work is worth it because these are like mind-blowingly delicious. They're gourmet. They are gourmet. It's very fancy. If you want to elevate your party to fancy, this is what you're going to make. This Gougere recipe will make a lot of them, like 35 to 40, maybe even more. So stick with me and I'll show you how we do it. We ate Sorry. these after we baked them because this is one where you bake them first and then freeze them. Yes, yeah, you have to. And they're so good. <laughs> Um, not as many made it into the freezer as... <laughs> and I'm not even sorry. And I'll tell you something else. When I went to go buy sour cream this morning, I picked up more of that aged cheddar because I'm making a batch of these at home. They are They're that, that good. good. They're that good. And really, they aren't really that complicated. So just watch and listen and learn and you can make gougères. You're going to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and line two baking sheets with parchment paper. In a medium saucepan, you want to heat half a cup of water, some butter, milk, and a bit of salt over medium heat until the mixture comes to a boil. Remove the pan from the heat and add your flour, some dried mustard and some cayenne, and then you wanna stir it with a wooden spoon. Now, I didn't have a wooden spoon and I used a spatula, and I'll tell you why the wooden spoon is important. Because once all the flour is incorporated, you stick it back over the heat and you still stir until it becomes silky smooth, and then it starts to pull away from the sides of the pan, and that's when you know that it's done. Because I used a spatula, I continually scraped the edge of the pan, and I feel like I did it a little bit too long and I didn't realize that it was pulling away properly until I actually stirred instead of scraped. And I'm like, oh, this is why they said wooden spoon. So now that you know that, I don't care what kind of spoon you use, this is the purpose of it, just so you know. Um, so then we're going to place the dough into a stand mixer mixing bowl and let it sit for like five to seven minutes. And then with the paddle, we are going to beat the dough for one minute on medium. Then we're gonna add in four eggs. We're gonna beat the eggs in one at a time. So you add your egg, beat it till it's well incorporated, and you wanna scrape down with a spatula the sides of the bowl and add your next egg. And you, you'll see how sticky and gooey it becomes and it's very, 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 very good. Then we're gonna add in our shredded cheese. Now this is old cheddar, aged white cheddar, and some chopped chives that we picked fresh from our December garden. I'm joking, we got it from the grocery store. 
Then we're gonna mix those in. We're gonna transfer that to a piping bag fitted with a half inch round piping tip. Now we did not have one, but I did some estimating and decided that the little gadget that holds the tip looked like it'd be about half an inch. So I just used that and it seemed to work pretty well. And, or you could just cut your piping bag. It will work fine without the tip. So we make these blobs that are about an inch and a half wide and they will, they will puff up a little bit. So you wanna give them a bit of space. And then with a wet finger, you can go over each of them and smooth out all of the ridges so that when they puff up, you have these nice smooth gougeres. And then if you would like, you could sprinkle some sea salt. And I was so excited about them. I think I forgot to do that. Then we're going to bake the gougeres in the oven at 400 for 25 to 30 minutes. Now you have two pans. It even says this in the directions. If you have a top pan, uh, uh, one of your sheets on top and one underneath, at 18 minutes you want to swap them. So we literally did everything that it says in this recipe and they were amazing! Amazing! They were super good. And they're different. They're like, different. Well, because they're work. Yes. This is not something that you're going to go to just your regular grocery store and buy a box of frozen gougeres at Costco. Right. Or even specialty stores like... And, you know, you've got your dips, you've got your meatballs, you've got your chicken wings, you've got your little, like, you know, all the crackers and cheese mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But this is different. This is different. And it's kind of impressive. It's only impressive for people that know how much work they are. If my kids came along and started grabbing those and, like, popping them in their mouth. You would be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> We're saving these for Christmas. Yes, these are special. Okay, last year, Charlotte and I each did a baking um, video, and I sometimes, you'll see in my video, I sometimes... I'll pop it right there. Yeah, we can pop it up there for you. I'll sometimes label things like chicken livers, or, you know, I don't, I don't know, something gross that they are not going to be interested in eating. Um, and then they will be more likely to leave it alone. They're not on to me yet, so you can take that tip if you like. So if you ever go raid Christie's freezer... Go for the chicken livers. <laughs> it's going to be the best thing in there. <laughs> when I was at Costco, I also got a bag of meatballs because it's one of those things that if you're only having appetizers for a meal, having meatballs going in the slow cooker just makes it so that it's that much heartier. People don't need a full meal if they've got the finger food and those meatballs, and it's, they're just filling, and my kids eat them up. <laughs> so, well, and not only they're filling, but they're also warm, and these are tasty, like they have a lot of tang, mm -hmm. and so it's, it feels appetizer-y, even though it could be mealy. Yes. Yeah, it is nice to have. You're absolutely right. And I actually made two of one of these recipes because I'm having the three appetizer nights and I wanted one for each of them because also it's so fast. You can take your bag out of the freezer. You can actually put it in when it's still fairly frozen and then put your crock pot on and walk away because you're using pre-cooked meatballs they came from the freezer section at your grocery store or at Costco or whatever. And we've found that we like the Costco ones, plus they come in the giant bag. So, you know, if you have a giant family or whatever, or if you're feeding a giant amount of people, it's kind of perfect. But then you don't have to think about it. And when you're rushing around doing like your veggie tray or cleaning the bathroom for company or whatever it is that you're doing, or taking time to read a Christmas novel. I don't know, whatever you do on the day that people come over. I rush around trying to clean the house. Um, then that's cooking while you're doing all the other things. So for our party meatballs, this is again, three ingredients. You've probably heard of this before. It's super simple. All you're gonna do is you're gonna put your meatballs in a large resealable freezer bag. Then you're going to add a jar of grape jelly, and a jar of chili sauce. I don't even bother mixing these things together in a bowl first. I just throw them right into the bag, squish it around a little bit to combine it, get as much air out as I can, seal it, and freeze it. Now, on the day that they cook in the crock pot, because the grape jelly kind of melts, that sauce does incorporate and combine, and you can just give it a stir and it'll be perfect. So there's no need to dirty an extra bowl. 
you know, but for the other recipe, the mm -hmm. cocktail meatballs, we do mix it together first just because it has a few more ingredients. I think you could get away with mixing it in the bag, but we've just always mixed it in a bowl, so. Yep, it works. Um, and so this is the cocktail meatballs. Very similar to the party meatballs, but um, just a, we switch it up a little bit, right? So we start out with our pre-cooked meatballs in our bag. And in a bowl, we're going to add some jellied cranberry sauce right out of the can, some chili sauce, a little bit of brown sugar, and a little bit of lemon juice. So that's why we're gonna mix it together and then add it to our bag and incorporate it all over our meatballs, get that excess air out, and seal it up. And the same thing as Charla said, on the day of cooking, you barely have to get these frozen. You just need to get them moving well and into the crock pot, and then you go about your day. Make sure you set out the cutest little toothpicks ever so that they can, you know, take them and toothpick them. Although I do seem to recall you always have a spoon, always, anyway. I'm just at that point, like everything else is fancy. It's quite funny, actually. I should someday, like, do a video or, or photos of my spread, but kind of the whole kitchen has food because I love the appetizers and I don't mind having a lot left over even. So no. eat appetizers for days. But I've got everything all fancy and these trays that, you know, have little little decorative things and whatever. And then I've got the meatballs still in the crock pot. I stick them on my island because then they can be plugged in. I have the crock pot there and just a spoon and kind of like help yourself. Everything else is fancy, but the meatballs are just like <laughs> digging. Good enough. Good enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> one of the other things we're going to be having at one of our appetizer nights this year, or maybe two, I think we probably made two bags, is Christy and I, once every three months, we do a mega session, which is where we make enough freezer meals to last both of our families mm -hmm. for the next three months. And we did one about a month and a half ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pop a video oh, right yes. there. You should watch it. Did 129 freezer meals, and one of the ones we did was our fire and ice shrimp, mm -hmm. so that we would both have it as an appetizer. I haven't the used mine yet either because I'm saving it. But we also did the bang bang shrimp. Now, it Which didn't freeze well, so -so. and it was only so so, but it was like it was all right. I would try it again and substitute out the mayo. Because mm -hmm. it's too mayo-y. It didn't freeze nice. No, it didn't end. It was just not one of our best. And we have so many great ones. Right. Why do a mediocre one? Exactly. But I still have one. And I think I'm going to use it and serve it. I think... It, it'll be somebody's favorite. I don't know who. <laughs> yes, it will. And I'm going to do my fire and ice shrimp because it's a winner. And we know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do both. Uh, this next dip is a ranch chicken dip. And it's a new one to us, so we are trying it out here. And in fact, I'm going to serve it tonight because I am having book club, and so it didn't even make it into my freezer. You're gonna, you've frozen yours, mm -hmm. so you're gonna be able to freeze it and then try it and then tell us if it's good. I'm just gonna try it, but I'm sure it's gonna be good. Actually, everything in this recipe looks like it's shaping up to be pretty good. So in a large bowl, we've added in a package of cream cheese, some cheddar cheese that's been shredded, sour cream, a little bit of chicken broth, some ranch dip mix. Now, if you use a packet, that is fine. We didn't have a packet, we buy it in bulk, so it's about three generous tablespoons. And then we add in some shredded chicken. Now, this came from a rotisserie chicken that we have shredded, and we're going to add in some crumbled bacon. The last thing is some green onion. Now, you can also, on the day of serving, sprinkle it with some green onion on top. But I then use the mixer to mix it all together so that it's all incorporated really well. It's smooth and it's creamy and it can go into the little trays and bam, I am going to have this tonight for our book club. I think there's like only three of us tonight. Everybody seems to be busy. It's the season. So I just need the little guy and it'll probably be more than I need and I can have it for breakfast in the morning. Exactly. Uh, do you know how many times I've had the buffalo chicken dip for breakfast in the morning? Me too. <laughs> totally, totally, because some, there is something about like next day buffalo chicken dip. So I think this one will also be a winner for breakfast the next <laughs> morning. 
And speaking of buffalo chicken speaking dip. Speaking of buffalo chicken dip. Of course, it would not be the holidays without making some buffalo chicken dip. So we took some of that rotisserie chicken and made some buffalo chicken dip. And our buffalo chicken dip is about the best. It really evolved from a recipe Christy found. Christy had been making it for years. It's one of those things where at her parties, people would ask for the recipe mm -hmm. and be like, oh my goodness, this is the best buffalo chicken dip ever. But Christy really kindly changed her recipe because I'm allergic to celery. It's true. So now we use water chestnuts. And so here's the thing. If I still make it with celery, I'm a little bit disappointed because the celery loses its crunch. And so when I make it with the water chestnuts, it tastes crunchier mm -hmm. and I like that. Like water chestnuts don't ever soften. So now I permanently make it pretty much with water chestnuts because I, it has that bit of texture and it. it has some crunch. And it's better. And I can share it with her. Now she's taken it a step further and she uses sometimes double um, Frank's Red Hot or you just like put in the whole bottle instead of a three quarter cup and it gets a little too hot for me. I'm like, no, stick to the recipe, but she can't and that's okay. Except when you mix it at my house and then I serve it, then it's the way then it should be. And that's how it is here today. Except that we use shredded chicken and I prefer it cubed. I felt really weird about using shredded chicken for it. I'm kind of, either way. So for your buffalo chicken dip in a bowl, you're gonna take some softened cream cheese. You're gonna add a bottle of ranch dressing, some Frank's red hot sauce. You're gonna mix that together. You can use a spoon or an electric mixer and you wanna add some grated cheddar cheese and mix that in. And then your cooked chicken, it can be shredded or cubed, like we were saying, and we just use the rotisserie chicken, shredded this time. And then you can add some celery or the water chestnuts that are chopped. We like to use um, quite a lot of those because again, we like the crunch. Once that's mixed together, you're going to divide it up into your foil trays or again, you could put this into a large resealable freezer bag and transfer it into a tray on the day you go to cook it because this bakes in your oven or your slow cooker. We've totally done it in the slow cooker. We have, and this size would fit in one of those little mini slow cookers, but yes, they don't seem would. to have a dial. I've never found one that has a dial. They're just mm -hmm. on or they're off. And so pretty soon you're like boiling your, yes. and it's, it's like, okay, I'm gonna unplug this now and we'll plug it in later if we need to. <laughs> so the reason that Christy had to run out and get sour cream today is I had bought enough for this whole mega marathon that we're doing of appetizers but I also have a family and they didn't get the memo that maybe don't make pierogies at midnight and use half of mom's sour cream. Who would do such a thing? But when you have teen, young adult, they sometimes eat at midnight, and, you know. They're allowed to eat, it's fine. So. They, they just didn't know and that's okay. So we're getting, I was going to town anyway, as it turns out. So this is of course the last recipe we're making because we were on hold. Now that Christy has rescued us, we can make our Santa Fe spirals. So this is a recipe that my sister-in-law, Steph, introduced me to probably 20 years ago. Her mom made it and now I make it, but now I've discovered that these can freeze. And just like those Christmas pinwheels that we made at the very beginning, we are gonna wrap these into um, plastic wrap individually and put them in your freezer bag. Now this does make more than that recipe made. So you might really only want to take out three or four for, because that'll feed a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So this can feed a couple of gatherings. Into a bowl, you're going to mix together some cream cheese, sour cream, salsa, green onions and jalapenos that are diced quite finely. If you like things spicy, you can keep the seeds and membranes in. If you don't, that is where the jalapenos get their spice from. So if you take out the seeds and membranes, then this will not be nearly as spicy. Once you've got that mixed together, 
You're gonna spread it out onto flour tortillas and roll those up. Again, wrap them in that plastic wrap, get them into a large resealable bag and freeze them. Now, when you go to slice these on the day of, you do wanna thaw them for a little bit. They don't need to thaw all day or anything, but you wanna thaw them so that they're easy to slice. They are easier to slice out of the freezer, actually, than they are out of the fridge, which is nice. So just, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, and these will be sliceable. And then you can display them, you know, out on your tray with a bowl of salsa in the middle and a little spoon for the salsa. And these are great dipped in the salsa. And there you go, easy peasy. And they're pretty festive too. because There's some red and green happening and yeah, they're really good and sometimes, you're right, sometimes there is some heat packed with these, sometimes they're more on the mild side, so there's a little something for everybody here. It's a surprise! <laughs> it's a surprise Santa Fe spirals! When you come to my house, you never know. <laughs> you're going to guess that it's going to be on the spicy side. True. Yes, that is true. So then I go and warn my children. <laughs> these ones are a little on the hot side, you can try it, but you might not like it. I don't ever, actually I don't usually say you might not like it. Right. Because that puts it into their head that mm -hmm. they might not like it. So I always say these are just a little bit on the spicy side. You could try it. There you go. That's it. That's all you got to say. My kids are getting there. So when I planned out these holiday appetizers, I... Got she really... went overboard. She, she did. Sometimes she just gets excited about appetizers, as you can tell. Very excited about appetizers. <laughs> and so there was an incident involving tart shells. We don't want to make this video two hours long. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this into two videos because our holiday appetizer marathon was truly a holiday appetizer marathon. It really was. We're going to pop a video over there once that video is up. So for now, that video will be some random thing. Uh, maybe it'll be last year's holiday appetizer video, but soon it will be the appetizer tarts video. <laughs> because there are five different kinds of tarts that are savory tarts coming your way. And you're gonna see some of the same themes, right? Because we have goat cheese and we have bacon. And we have and, brie. And, and, and we, we have, have brie and there's crab. And no, no, no crab in there, okay. But we're kind of doing some overlap with some of the ingredients that we used today and a lot of tarts. <laughs> a lot of tarts, which are bite-sized pieces of fun. So you join us for that one too. Thank you so much for joining us today. Happy holidays and happy cooking.